Hello everyone, welcome back again. <laughs> you are uh, on my channel, which is uh, Spiritual Growth Tarot and Astrology. I'm Denise, and this is your astrology reading for the week of September 18th through the 24th. And on the 22nd, we have the um, first day of autumn, the autumn equinox, you know, when the light and dark is absolutely equal. I love it. So first day of Libra. It'll be uh, Libra birthday months. One of my favorite signs. Actually, they're all pretty much my favorite, but Libra's in my heart. <laughs> so uh, let me bring the camera down and show you these charts. We have quite a bit, quite a bit going on still. Okay, hold on. <laughs> well, first thing off, I'm noticing that for the next few days, I think through Tuesday, we still have the Yod. We have that finger of fate here between Chiron, so our ability to do all our deep healing, deepest inner conflict type of work, clearing that out, move that energy through from the past, and that opportunity there, that energy there, all week, well, not it was all week last week, but now three more days this week, right? So moving the energy from the past and clearing it out, deeply transforming it with... Um, Scorpio up at the south node. And Uranus is, you know, it's because of the opposition to the south node, it's activated as well in this uh, aspect here. So Uranus is so great for moving energy as well because it helps us wake up, right? It can be sometimes a little disruptive, but it can help us detach when we need to when there's a, a break that needs to happen for any reason, you know, for yourself. Uh, it's it, Uranus is good for that because it, it clears things. It, it helps you wake up where you, wherever you need to wake up. So that's uh, the backdrop for a few days. And, of course, we, I have to mention just briefly, Saturn is still squaring the nodes. Saturn is retrograde until, uh, well, first off, it'll be squaring the nodes, including Uranus there, right? We see the, see the double square here, and then to the south node. So south node remembers the past, north node's the future. Uranus is helping us wake up <laughs> to what really matters to us in the future. And we are thinking more and more and more about what really matters to us. And Uranus is retrograde, so we are reviewing it over and over until um, till into January, late January of next year. It doesn't go direct until then. So we have quite some time. And it's going to retrograde back to about 15 degrees. But the north node is going to continue to go because the nodes go backwards. So um, it'll, it'll continue to scooch along as well. But anywho, <laughs> this... Uh, Saturn up there in the T-square between the past and the future is helping us to wake up to whatever because it's in uh, Aquarius, so thinking outside the box and freeing ourselves, especially freeing our minds and our bodies. Well, just all of it, right? I mean, consciousness is the thing that clears out everything. If people did more consciousness work, we would be fine. <laughs> things would be so much better if we were becoming, if we were all focused on becoming aware of whatever needs to clear out and instead not making ourselves bad or wrong because we're going through something. Uh, but anyway, Saturn is, is very karmic. It, uh, so Uranus is retrograde, and like I said, until January of next year. Saturn is retrograde, um, and it's in this T-square. So, but to, so the T-square to the nodes is until November 16th. But that retrograde doesn't end until um, October 23rd. So even though the square tension will release a little bit, we're, we're still, I really feel like until the end of the year, and Pluto has to go uh, direct as well, and that won't happen until um, October 8th. Uh, we will see. We will let's make let's us all make a mental note to see if retro shade is really a thing because I'm starting to wonder if it is. 
Because when I think back on, you know, my experiences of when a planet goes direct, I, d I don't, it doesn't feel like there's a, a long time. You know, they talk about a retro shade, like when the degree, when the planet has to move, you know, past the degree it went retrograde. But I'm, let's just set the intention to explore that and wait and see when Mercury goes, ret or goes direct from the retrograde. When it stations direct, I always feel it. I feel it that day. And that it feels like it's just done to me. But that maybe that's just that might be my brain because I have Mercury conjunct Uranus, you know, natally. So anyway. And Mercury retrograde natally. <laughs> so maybe I work better when things are when Mercury's retrograde anyway. Uh, then again, I, I, I can't have I don't have any excuses. <laughs> so Saturn up here in this T-square is going to be helping us to clear out old karma, think outside the box. Uh, it creates a tension field between the past and the future, but the future is geared towards freeing ourselves up because one thing, it's the future. Second thing, Uranus is here, and it's the slower moving planet outside of Saturn. But then, you know, big time Pluto's over here sextiling Neptune, and these two planets are the, you know, like the longest transiting and then the second longest, second longest transiting planet with Neptune. And this aspect here is really good for artists. It's really good for anybody channeling information, especially about the changes to move forward into the future. Uh, Neptune is all things spiritual, everything that rules film, media, uh, you know, putting ourselves out there on any platform that we want. It's really good for music. Uh, it's all forms of spirituality. And in Pisces, I mean, Neptune in Pisces is like, there is pure potentiality. There is no limit. There are no limitations on your, on your artistic uh, self-expression, your creative self-expression. Nor is there on your ability to dissolve old false beliefs, old images that don't uh, help anymore, old misconceptions, old wrong conclusions. We can dissolve those things if we can go into the place of seeing ourselves as a much bigger being than this um, human experience that we're going through right now. But now, a way that it might not go well is if we're into a victim mentality or if we're into blaming others, which is a part of victim mentality, right? You're trying to put your self-responsibility onto someone else or something else outside of you. You know, like if the, if the government would just get this stuff together, well, we do have to, you know, fight that. But we always have to bring it home. You know, what? how are we... Uh, projecting outward if that's what's happening transference is a real thing you know i mean it's it's like we are pretty much projecting outward at least 95 percent of the time what our uh beliefs and um you know, thoughts feelings emotions attitudes all of that it's in our aura and it is it's emanating outwards uh from from who we are so, if, um, if we're not working to dissolve the old, then we're just transferring that out into the universe. And is it helping? You know, I mean, I know all the times so I've, it's like, it, I don't know that it helps so much. <laughs> Some of the things that go through my head or come out of my mouth. Uh, but, you know, you're human. We're all human. We need to uh, just be with ourselves, and we can always do better, like they always say. How many comedians have always said, yeah, we can do better? Uh, so here's the way to do it better. With Neptune sextile Pluto. So Pluto in Capricorn is all about our integrity and being in our true authority, taking self-responsibility. That's the lesson of Pluto in Capricorn. 
it's not good for uh, politicians and uh, any person in a position of power over other people. It's not good if they are out of integrity. And we have seen, that's why we've seen, you know, since... Um, since 2008, when Pluto moved into Capricorn, we've seen the, all the darkness come up. And um, we're, we're not out of it until, when is it? Um, oh, wait, here's my notes again. Mm, final visit to Capricorn from September 1st, 2024. Yeah, it doesn't, Pluto is not into Aquarius to stay until November. <laughs> Look at that. More than two years from now. That's intense. So, we still have a lot of cleanup, you know, work to do. Uh, but here's, here's the way through it for us. I'm going to try to stick to more personal trends, you know, or, or relay the information personally for, I mean, not personally from my experience. Well, that's always tainted in there, I suppose. But I'm... Um, to read for you guys personally rather than so much politically because you know what's going on and if you want to know more you can turn on the news but I'm just here to say it's all reflected in the astrology <laughs> it blows me away so um, the way through this um, situation is wonderful opportunity here remember sex titles are always opportunities so it's the opportunity to come from the power Pluto power of your spirit, Neptune's spirit. And then with this trine, we have the aspect of the architect with the sun. And the sun is still traveling, you know, it's going this way. It, so the trine to Pluto, it doesn't last all week, but we're going to have it for a few days. And, and so it'll be waning, but it's leading up to right now. So this day, Sunday, is a very, very powerful day for the light to be shown to show you your true power and help you connect more deeply with your spirit. I love it. And then with Mercury in Libra, Mercury being the bridge, the messenger that's the bridge, uh, yeah, there's a couple of uh, sesqui squares here that show some, some tension. I would say best thing, best way to use this energy personally is try not to be stubborn. Try not to hold on to a rigid way of relating when it comes to Libra, Mercury and Libra. Try to think outside the box. Uh, that would, you know, gracefully use that um, Saturn in Aquarius. And, yeah, and then especially the, that's the case with um, the Moon in Cancer for the day. Well, it's, it'll be a couple of days. Two to two and a half days getting through here. Remember, like I said earlier, uh, the moon's going to move all the way through um, Virgo uh, this week. So two, two and a half days here, Leo, and then it'll, we'll it, it, itch into itch. Is that the right word? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> move into Virgo. <laughs> And then, by then, Mercury will be retrograding back into Virgo, too, by the end of the day, or end of the week. Uh, and then later next week, we get that new moon in Libra. So that's going to be cool, because it'll catch up. Uh, so anyhow, let's get back to the day with the moon in Cancer is squaring Mercury. So there's a tension field there around... So Cancer wants to be safe, wants security, wants more self-confidence, which is what Leo's all about. <laughs> but it's also very psychic. And that's why sometimes Cancer, Cancerians or someone with Moon and Cancer, uh, or a lot of Cancer in your chart, you, it takes a while to find yourself um, because you're psychically picking up what's going on around you so much that you're having to differentiate and make distinctions about um, what's yours and what's theirs. So the more deep inner work you do on yourself, the more you clear clear out those channels so that you know, wait, this isn't me. Wait, oh, okay. Or I don't like the way that feels, so I'm not going to go over to that part of the store, right? Things like that. 
uh, driving through an area and you're like, ugh, it feels yucky around here. What is this? And then, you know, you drive into a new town and it's like, oh, this is better. So you get to know yourself over the years. And that's, that's what, um, you know, developing cancer is all about. It's developing your feelings. It's developing your psychic abilities, your intuition, your senses, all of your senses, all of your like spidey senses, you know. But with this day being the moon in cancer, uh, it's all about our home. It's about protecting ourselves. It can have to do with the past, where we something we might need to be let, you know, be letting go of. Uh, we might have a day. We might wake up feeling either the need to take care of others or be taken care of, or both. It might be kind of a needy, clingy, cuddly day, uh, especially in the morning if you have kids. You know, when you have little ones crawl into bed with you, or wake up and go. I'm hungry, <laughs> and you have to hurry and start cooking. Or you might wake up in the morning and go, oh, look at all this laundry. I've got to get this stuff done. And it's a day of taking care of the home. You know, there's There are all those possibilities. It's also the possibility that you're feeling much more emotional than ever. And with the square to Mercury, it could have to do with relationships, and you're trying to assess... Uh, at least one relationship or your ability to relate with others and trying to figure out maybe maybe there's more sensitivity about something you said in the past that you wish you didn't and and um, you might even find yourself having to apologize to someone or just let them know that oh wait I said something that you could have taken the wrong way and it might not have anything to do you know with the two of you together but it could be more about just you yourself and you want to be made clear you want to you want clarity around something that you said in the past because the moon can be the past mercury is all about communication so i uh, with yeah with the sesco square up to saturn too again whatever is coming through from the past could have to do with the relationship with your father or any outside authority figure, and you're having to reassess there. There's that possibility. You could have a father figure or an authority person in your life uh, who used to be an authority figure, and they are stubbornly wanting to get your attention. And then you're over here feeling, wow, that's quite a demand. <laughs> And, and then with the square up here to Jupiter in Aries, you're like, oh, hell no, I'm out of here. <laughs> this is not. Because with uh, the moon here in Cancer, notice how it's at a T-square to Mercury and then up to Jupiter. And, and if that's not enough, I'll explain the whole nine yards in a second. If that's not enough. Jupiter's opposing uh, Mercury. So again, this it's still the same as last week where it's like we, we may have to bite our tongues sometimes right here because um, the polarity of Aries and Libra can be me versus them or me versus you or you know us versus them kind of thing and we have to be careful uh, sometimes but also on other times or in other situations I should say with, uh, now I'm speaking more to the moon, you know, at the T-square point. You're intuiting something that's happened from a long time ago and the patterns of the past, because remember, you know, holding space here for this whole time, we, it's um, the sun in Virgo and Venus is moving close to it. It's close enough, you know, we're less than 10 degrees here, we're 9 degrees away. It's close enough. I would call that a conjunct. Because I, I allow a 10 degree orb, sometimes even a 12 degree orb, it depends. And the sun is very strong. And Venus is very strong about figuring out what we really, really care about. And with this Mercury opposition to, to Jupiter, it can be really good for talking. It can be really good for uh, figuring out things, uh, it, you can have some uh, 
debatable uh, arguments kind of that are that turn out to be productive. And it can also be really good for making long-term plans. And I say all of that because especially and just this aspect enough, would be enough, you know, Jupiter opposing uh, Mercury from Aries to Libra. But when you bring in also the Virgo Sun and, and uh, Venus, well, I mean, my goodness. And then Venus is also doubly trining. <clears throat> it's in a trying to... Uranus and the North Node, again, it's like I said last week about tracking patterns and healing. It's such a good week for healing. And notice that Venus is in that um, aspect of the architect here up to the South Node. So there's opportunities for deeply healing, deeply being Scorpio, healing being Virgo, relationship issues being Venus. Because remember, Venus is all about relating well, everything's relating. Life is like, you know, it's just this relationship with life, right? <laughs> but anyway, with, um, with Venus, we're in that territory of love, what we love and what we don't love. It, c it can compare, and like it was, was saying before with Virgo, it's like cutting the wheat from the chaff type of thing. And then I'm um, clearing things out that don't work anymore, clear, tracking patterns, getting clear on what the pattern is and, and not doing it anymore or not allowing it anymore, uh, or in the process of going back and forth with like, okay, we're doing it again. Let's don't do this. We, we said we weren't going to do this. Let's stop doing it, whatever it was, you know. And, and it could even be something as simple as a negative thought judgmental thoughts and and you catch yourself and it's like okay let's just stop that doesn't help let's just send love and because venus is love and pleasure so how does it feel when you go into your heart and send love versus judging versus i'm um, stewing <laughs> right and i uh, yeah i feel like i'm kind of talking about the whole chart all the aspects now with this with everything even with uh, the moon and cancer as well. So what else? Especially with Mars and Gemini. Yeah. But the moon down here at the T-square can it be extremely effective in uh, moving the energy because now you can, when the moon's in Cancer, you can you can sense what's really going on. You can feel what's really going on. You can empath your clairvoyance, whether it's your clear sight, you know, the sixth chakra, or your, you know, fifth chakra clear audience, or your third chakra direct knowing coming, you know, from your solar plexus, or if it's your whole body where you're suddenly feeling, I don't know, like maybe a stab in your back and you're thinking, oh my gosh, is somebody talking about me behind my back or somebody wanting to get even with me? Oh, do I need to apologize to someone? What's going on? <laughs> that kind of thing. Or if you're working with someone else and you're, and you're a facilitator of some type, I you might pick up what's what's gone on for them in the past and it could be a point to bring up and you know talk about a little bit or just question so the moon in cancer is so good for that it's also now this could be taurus or cancer it can also be a day where and it depends on what it activates in your chart but where you feel like cooking you feel like shopping everything to do with food is associated with cancer <laughs> So, yeah. Okay, anything else? I covered the aspect of the, or I'm sorry, the, um, the yod, the finger of fate here. I've covered um, the square up to Saturn, the T-square down here from the moon, the sun Venus, the sun is still in that powerful, I think I did talk a little bit about that, but it's really important that the sun in that flow to uh, powerful uh, Pluto and Capricorn, Virgo to Pluto, you know, Virgo details and discernment and then leads to more powerful situations in your life, managing, better power management issues with the, this uh, trine here.
<laughs> I love that. Working smarter, working more effectively, and then teamwork. You know, what is that acronym? Together each achieves more. That's, that's a really good uh, call on Virgo trining uh, Pluto and Capricorn. Okay, covered that. I, we do have that sesquisquare, or no, I'm sorry, semi-square here from Saturn to Jupiter, and then from Jupiter over to um, the North Node. No, it's to Uranus. Yeah, it's to Uranus. So expansion, uh, Jupiter expands, and it's usually moving towards more abundance and prosperity. But sometimes it can be lost, but it's lost that'll 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 be helpful later on. I mean, it can be really painful, but then later on, uh, there's healing when it's when it's painful. But that's true of anything. But that's basically what the, you know. If there's loss that comes from Jupiter, uh, it's it's meant to help us see the gifts within the the pain. That's what that planet is holding space for on the when it comes to loss. But mostly, it's all about abundance and expanding. And then Saturn is, um, you know, there to test things out. Like, will it really work? So expanding in ways. There's a little bit of tension. There's action that needs to be taken to expand in ways that free yourself. That's basically the. Um, semi-square there between Uranus and Jupiter. And then from Jupiter back to Saturn, there's tension in, well, basically Jupiter at the apex point up here to this, you know, like arrow. Uh, and then coming from Mercury, basically it's like, are we thinking in ways and relating in ways that help us expand and f that can also free ourselves? And then how do we structure our lives around that? And can we, right? Do we have something, Jupiter, that we can believe in, which is a Jupiter keyword, so you, what do you believe in? And then Saturn, how can you manifest it? And Uranus, uh, will, it help, will it help your life or will it um, be shocking or chaotic or bring disruption that's not, not cool? And then Uranus is in the semi-square semi here to... Uh, cancer, the Cancer Moon. So there's that other question of um, can we s be more sensitive? Adjustments may need to be so aha moments that you feel in your body with your Uranus and Taurus, and then with uh, the se semi square over to um, the Moon in Cancer. That brings in that element of I sense it. Now what do I do with it? Right? Remember, Taurus always wants to be safe. Cancer damn well will really work hard to be safe and secure. And when it comes to Uranus retrograde, we are working to reinvent ourselves in ways that create more security and safety, more protection. The, both of these yeah, you know, signs. Taurus and uh, Cancer are so geared towards uh, self-preservation and sensitivity and protection. So with Mars there in Gemini, it's re we're really motivated to gather as much information about ourselves and life and others so that we can clear out the past and move forward in ways that are really helpful. So, okay, so let's see what Monday brings. I'm sure the moon's still in Cancer. And, yep, it's right there at 14 degrees. And it's in a trying to the south node. So, again, aha moments, right? Uh, they're still there. And I look at the aspect of the architect there. So the opportunities, aha moments, opportunities, everything I just said about the moon in Cancer, and then now we have an easy flow to connect with the past and figure out what worked and what didn't because Scorpio is really good about figuring out ways to get through crisis situations, to regenerate old from the old into the new. 
and to go deep. It's also good for getting secrets out too. So there could be, you know, more, <laughs> I mean, with Mercury in Libra retrograde, we can expect all types of news dumps about relationships. And we can see that the DOJ has been, you know, working its way up the food chain. Of course, Merrick Garland's been doing that. And there were like 40 subpoenas that went out last week. So they're gearing up for the J6 thing as well at the end of the month, which is right around the corner. So I uh, we can expect that. And in our personal lives, this can be a deeply transformational day to really move forward, really move forward and uh, to trust your intuition so much more than you ever have. And then Mars is in this trying to... Um, Saturn, so again, that movement of, with Gemini, we're questioning, you know, all the time. We're, we're trying to work our way out of duality, like, is it this or that? Oh, maybe it's both, <laughs> right? <laughs> Instead of either or, put in the word and and see what happens. Because and, there are feelings, right? We need safety and security and we want pleasure because that's who we, you know, we are. <laughs> In the spirit world, we are nothing but a big, big ball of love. <laughs> a big giant orb of love and pleasure. All types of love and pleasure. And when, you know, moving from Taurus into Cancer, you know, it's like I'm here, I have a body, and then, oh, I have a brain and I can think and I can communicate. And then I'm feeling everything in Cancer. We're feeling everything. So with the moon square over to Chiron, we are reassessing whatever we want to heal. Look how it's exact. We have an exact square. So we have a tension field from old dualistic conflicts of the past. And Mars that wants to get out of duality, but also wants the truth. And, the, and there's that flow of getting information, getting to the truth and then creating some new rules in your life. Or if this is a government institution or any part of the government, creating new rules so that things, writing up new laws and trying to get them passed so that these things can't happen again in the future. And discovering Mars in, uh, well, Uranus and Taurus and Mars and Gemini is so much about discovery. And, you know, the Sun and Venus in... Uh, in, in Virgo is nothing to sneeze at either. I mean, these are all powerful, powerful aspects to figure out what's been working in your life and what hasn't and whatever hasn't to learn from it and make adjustments. And you can see we still have the, the yod, the finger of fate. So all these adjustments up to the past, go deeper, figure it out, dig your heels in where you need to and let go of and forgive where, where you need to. And then just keep your mind alive and move forward. And the opportunities to always heal the deepest inner conflict with Chiron in Aries. Healing uh, abandonment issues. Healing any place where you feel like you've had to be first or, or you've been left out and that's really painful. Things like that. Um, you know, feeling those those old pains and processing them through and coming through the other side. All the aspects are here for that. And let's see, the moon is also sextile Venus. So there's <laughs> more discernment, Venus in Virgo discernment about what your real feelings are. And remember, when you do all of the emotional, when you do, when you work on your emotional reactions, so basically the place where you go into I'm either needing to be thinking, thinking, feeling, sensing inside that you need to be more aggressive, but you have to be careful about being overly aggressive or controlling. And you also have to be careful about being passive aggressive, right? Because it's still aggression. Or are you going into withdrawal and you're just walking away and saying, forget it, I'm not even going to, you know. Or, you know, are you not engaging? Or are you assessing the relationship, if it's a relationship or a work issue or whatever, if you're assessing whether or not you even want to stay because maybe you don't want to invest any more time because you've already done it over and over and over again and you're tired of it, 
and you don't see any change whatsoever, so why would you keep torturing yourself? It can be something like that. Or maybe you're having to protect others. You know, if you're a mom, you're, having, you're thinking to protect your kids, and it's like uh, the government's not doing its job, or the school system isn't doing its job, so I'm going to take care of my kids myself in whatever way you see fit, um, and be more healthy and more safe and secure, and structure my the details of my schedule around that, which is very Virgoian. Virgoian? Virgo, Virgoian? I don't know how to say that. It's a very Virgo trait. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, detail, structure, scheduling, that's all Virgo. Health, figuring out what works and what doesn't, eliminating what doesn't, and um, moving into more balance, you know, when we get into Libra season, which is going to be this week. <laughs> so, let's see opportunities for all of that and some more sensitive opportunities for structuring your life in a way that's uh, that works and making adjustments where you're where you're bumping up against uh, authorities or structures who uh, are not um, they're not working in your favor or they're not working to it's just not helping right yeah let's see what else I'm um, Venus here trining Uranus we talked a little bit about it but I feel like I've gone deeper here for some reason i um, this can bring in because you know there's a flow in it and it's um, a nice flow of energy between Uranus and Venus. This could help us feel better. Our emotions can be more in alignment with the way they need to go. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was talking about emotional reactions. Well, when you when you work through your emotional reactive material where you're either uh, aggressing, pushing yourself out there, or you're withdrawing, holding back, or you're um, submitting, right? That would be in the passive-aggressive type of a situation. If you're submitting, you're not going to do it anymore. You're going to stop because there's this flow of energy. Maybe maybe you've been submitting in the past because you thought that was the, the spiritual thing to do even though it was hurting you, right? Or maybe you were pushing your energy out there in trying to control things because you thought that was the way to be more responsible for all parties involved, but then you realize you're just enabling. Maybe you're working through dependency and codependency issues with someone. So all of these things are up for healing this week. They're up for healing every day, but there's a lot of energy for healing deeply. So sometimes Venus in, um, I'm sorry, Venus trining Uranus brings something that's really exciting because now there's a flow into the relationship like never before. So if you've been working with someone you're trying to heal, like let's say you've been in couples counseling or uh, family you know, like the whole family, uh, or you, let's say you're a mom and you've been in therapy with your daughter, you know, with a therapist, and you and your daughter have been trying to work things out, or you and your son, or what, whatever, or you and a granddaughter or grandson or anybody, or two friends, uh, or a whole family. Breakthroughs abound here because there's a flow. There's a nice flow. So that's, that's a real possibility for, um, I, I want to say for all week, because we had the approaching and and then we'll have the waning, you know, it's at 17. So I'm feeling like it's going to go through to the about the end of the week. But mostly active uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, you could just really get free from any old limitations because now you've you know what the patterns are. Um, 
there could be, now that you know more intuitively what's been going on because of these two sextiles here from Venus and then over to Uranus, you know, and the moon is going this way into an exact sextile, uh, we've got quite a situation here where there are opportunities to negotiate. We could have something to do even with money with Taurus, you know, negotiating that way. I. Uh, or it could, you know, be on a relationship level where you're figuring out, you know, like I said before, oh, I'm tracking a pattern in me and I realize what I'm doing and I want to tell you why I've been projecting onto you or what my deepest insecurity really is. And, uh, and I'm so sorry I got caught up in that with you and, you know, and you're, so you might be apologizing and then there's a breakthrough in the relationship. I... You know, because until you know yourself, until you know your own patterns deep within, you can't explain it to someone else. They're, they're just picking up on unconscious patterns coming out, or they're, hurt, they're hurting or feeling annoyed because you keep doing it, but they won't be able to tell you what it is, and it's not even appropriate that they do. They can just tell you how they feel about what's happening to, you know, with them, what their feelings are. But, you know, if you have one person over here saying, you know, you're doing this to me, and this one over here is saying, you're doing this to me, well, how's that going to work? <laughs> it's, we, we get caught up in the blame game, right? So we don't want to do that because it doesn't work. You, we always have to come from I statements. You know, you make the statement, you find, you track your pattern and figure out what your pattern is, or you figure out your pattern is, you feel into it, try to work it through best you can on your own. And then come to the other person or the other people, the other, you know, the parties, all parties involved. Uh, and this, these are only in, in relationships where there's intimacy and trust. Okay, with especially when we have the uh, Taurus North Node and Scorpio South Node. You don't, you, you don't come to just, you don't take it into your workplace and start telling everybody there. Right? You tell your therapist, you tell your spiritual, you know, therapist, if it's me, you tell your uh, loved one that only the loved people that are involved that you can trust, right? That are trustworthy. And then from there, uh, things shift drastically. And this can be a drastic shift, a drastic healing shift. <laughs> and then you can just let it go. Because when you have faced yourself and taken responsibility, taken self-responsibility, and you're working to heal the issue as deeply as you can, then you want to, when you've processed the pain and you've gotten in touch with a false belief and you understand what you've created and you've, you're working to make, you know, um, what is it, recompense or something like that, you know, restitution, with the parties involved, then if you've done all of that, there is no reason in the world to hold on to it or to not forgive yourself. And the South Node in Scorpio is holding space for us to all forgive ourselves and free up everything, which is Neptune and Pisces holding space there. And yeah, and just pat yourself on the back because it's not easy being human. Now, I love seeing the... Um, the moon trining the south node because there's that possibility there for releasing the past and bringing in the new because Cancer always wants to keep growing. And with the sextile to Uranus in the south, or I'm sorry, north node, the moon's here at this like uh, kind of a bucket point, you know, holding the lever to free yourself up into the future, to create the abundance and the pleasure and the love that you deserve. Because if you can forgive yourself from the past, there's no reason to uh, beat yourself up anymore uh, or, or beat up any, anyone else, especially if they've said they're sorry. Even if they don't know what their pattern was, but they said they're sorry and you feel that it's real, then, uh, then just let it go. But if they keep saying they're sorry, but they keep doing it and, the, and there's no changes, well, then you have to go with the actions needing to, you know, match the words. Because that's the spiritual meaning of communication. So, let's see. Anything else with the moon? Nothing there. 
Let's see if there's anything different. Now, Sun, Trine, Pluto, still there. Mars, Sextile, Chiron, still there. Yeah. So many opportunities for healing and talking and working things out. Okay, so the moon is um, in the Cancer moon, 26 degrees Cancer there, is opposing Pluto for when, or Tuesday morning. You can see we still have all the other aspects. We still have the finger of fate, the yod. Everything's the same here. Opposing Mercury opposite Jupiter is still there, of course. Um... Uh, yeah, because they're both retrograding. <laughs> it is staying even with each other. It really is. This really is an important dynamic. Healing communications, getting out of us versus them situations. Uh, okay, so but let's just focus in on the moon because I feel like uh, that's the important thing. So you can see that it's opposing Pluto. So there's a powerful confrontation between your feelings and your authority. You're, you're feeling much, much more into your integrity. And through the confrontation, there can be a breakthrough. And the moon is in, it's at the apex again of uh, another um, aspect of the architect. So, the, but this time it's up to Neptune. And this, is, this was building throughout the night too, because you can see where the moon is at 26, Neptune's at 23. So this was building. It was actually building all throughout the day. Now it's at this focal point where, where you're much more, more, even more intuitive, more psychic as to your spirit. I'm thinking, you know what? You guys are going to have to let me know. Did you have some major dreams? That Did dream time come through and help you with some healing? Because look at this. I mean, we have this. Uh, <laughs> my God, this is beautiful. So the um, aspect of the architect here and the aspect of the architect here. So we have a, a divine rectangle going on. And so the moon's at one point and Pluto's at the other. Plus the moon is also opposing Pluto. So there's a lot of action between spiritual healing deeply healing your soul and your emotional body and then opportunities to shine your light in a whole new way and also to communicate from that power. It's like now you know what you've been feeling. Like earlier in the week, it's like something was something was there and you kind of maybe didn't know for sure. Last week, maybe you're healing something. But this week, something else came through and now it's like, wow, this is huge. And you can communicate in a much better way about it. And that's especially true with the, the sun in this uh, semi-square here to the south node. There is light being shown on the action that needs to be taken to keep healing the past. And you're not going to feel good until you know that you're working in that direction. I feel it has mostly to do with forgiveness, that that is the transforming power. Um, yeah, and then Neptune and Pisces is holding space for that. And the sun is opposing Neptune. And that was that was the lead up yesterday as well. Did I miss that? Maybe I totally missed that. I sure did. Look at that, 26. Did I miss it all week? I certainly did. Okay, so let's talk about it now. Notice how the sun's at 25, Neptune's at 23. I hope I didn't miss it last week. Knowing me, I probably did. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So let's make sure we talk about it now. So the, the sun in an opposition. So remember, an opposition is always going to be a confrontation. So what's in confrontation? Well, the sun is our core energy that's moving through time and space. It's our conscious mind. Some astrologers call it our ego, but I tend to look at, our, at the moon as being the filter of the ego that's always changing and, and clearing. But, you know, you can look at ego uh, through all the planets. I, I, you know, tend to not nail it down that way. But so the power of the sun is shining a spotlight into your spiritual 
reality, the, the essence of who the essence of who you are as a spiritual being. And the polarity between Pisces and Virgo can be the most beautiful. I know I talked about that last week because Virgo gets into the discernment of the details and can be very, very healing. And then Neptune is just always holding space there for us to dissolve any old uh, levels of unconsciousness and false beliefs and, you know, whatever needs to clear. It's, it's just always there helping us to dissolve that. But when it comes to an opposition, we do have that confrontation. And then when we, so if we go through the confrontation, and it, sometimes it can come through a relationship, and that's especially true with the opposition between Jupiter and Mercury. Um, we are in that place of mirroring each other, like two mirrors, or life is mirroring us, and we're figuring out, oh, what the heck? I'm in duality. What's going on there? Why would I think that way? What is that belief all about? Who is this person representing uh, as to mirroring the false belief back to me? Or who is on the other side saying, hey, you don't have to think that way. It, I'm not thinking that way about you. Why would you think that way about yourself? And questioning. And so therefore, there's a confrontation. So it can be a spiritual confrontation that helps to heal. And therefore, then you have the breakthrough. That's why oppositions lead to breakthroughs. Now, let's see. Did we yeah, we talked about the moon talked about the divine rectangle, what that's about. Uh, anything else? The sun is in a the sesquisquare over to um, the north node. Yeah. And Mercury's in a sesquisquare to Uranus. So there can be some stubborn holding on uh, because, and I feel with this combo here, it can be judgments, like I know the truth, I see it, I got the, de I have the deets, I know what's going on, but you're not saying it because you don't want to rock the boat with Mercury and Libra. You know, if it's peace at any price, you don't want to rock the boat, and but you're holding it all in. Well, maybe that's the tension field that needs to be let go of. Maybe to give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's about giving yourself the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this is about talking unkindly to yourself. And, um, yeah, I have to remind myself about that all the time because, you know, they say that our, our subconscious doesn't have a sense of humor. So if we're, you know, I do that all, all the time. I, you know, I'll say, oh, I'm an idiot, you know, something like that. And it's like, well, I shouldn't say that. And I feel like that's what this is about here. Uh, and let's see, what else? Yeah, and that would be the breakthrough. With your honest, that could be definitely the breakthrough that, that brings in more pleasure. Let's see. What? I'm taking care of this one here. This one here. There. Yeah, this feels complete. Okay, let me move into Wednesday. And the moon's in Leo. <laughs> Okay, so the Sun and Mercury are talking even closer. Have you noticed that they've been inching together, Sun conjunct Mercury, all week long? Uh, yeah. So all the same aspects I spoke about before are still here, I mean, except for the divine rectangles gone. But you can see how now we have not only... Um, so we have an eight degree separation rather than nine degrees. This is a tighter orb here. This is a tighter orb here. And it creates this triple, which is a stellium, even though it's two different signs, but a stellium of the sun and Mercury, the sun in the middle of Mercury and Venus. So the sun shines a light, it puts some core energy out there for healing in Virgo. With Mercury, it's all about the mind and communication and the way we think. There are thought patterns, and with Venus is how we relate. And that is in this triple trine up here to pl very, very powerful Pluto in Capricorn. This 
to me feels like, let me make sure this is straight. Yeah, okay. Um, this to me feels feels like uh, this could sh this could be a big shift here uh, in in our inner integrity. Now we still have this part of that. We notice that we don't have the yod anymore, but we we have one part of it. We still have the adjustment from the past. Scorpio, transformative, deeply transformative Scorpio that doesn't want to be in crisis and be so intense anymore. And we're making the adjustments into figuring out what it is inside of us that was attracting it in the past and um, how we, we can clear out that conflict, conflict and be more present, be more free and present, you know, present, <laughs> present now. Not in the past, now. But we have to clean up the past. You can't just fly forward into a new reality without, without doing the consciousness work. It, it's always about clearing out the past. Uh, and if you don't, you'll come face to face with it in your current reality because life will always bring you those opportunities to clear out the past. Until you get to the point, it's like that... Um, Hold on. Do I have it? It's the Hole in the Sidewalk poem. I don't know if I have it close by. Let me see. Do I? Oh, come on. Maybe it'll just take too long to find it. I should have it here. Wait. Just in case you're new to my channel. You can find it online. It's by Portia Nelson. And it's called There's a Hole in My Sidewalk. It's like in five... Here it is, right in the back. Uh, hold on. I'll read it to you real quick. You can snapshot it there. You can get those files back in that box. That thing. It's a basket. So, there's a hole in my sidewalk. I walk down the street. So here's the first chapter. You walk down the street, there's a hole, a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It's not my fault. It takes forever to find my way out. Chapter 2. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in this same place. But it's not my fault. It still takes me a long time to get out. Chapter 3. <laughs> I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it's there. I still fall in. It's a habit, but my eyes are open. I know where I am. It's my fault, so I get out immediately. Chapter 4. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk, and I walk around it. Chapter 5. I walk down another street. <laughs> This is the healing process, and we will do this over and over and over again until we don't need to anymore. So again, if you want to get this online, it's by Portia Nelson. <laughs> you could print it out and stick it on the fridge. And anytime you start to beat yourself up around, oh, I'm doing it again, or this is never going away, or it's, or life is hopeless, and, it, and all this healing stuff is a bunch of crap, it just doesn't work, read that poem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so the moon in Leo will help and it's in the T-square from the past to the future it's shining the light and it's, a, it's an approaching um, T-square so there's this tension field of getting into your heart right so basically Uranus and Taurus can create a lot of high energy in our bodies. And we might need some extra grounding, you know, through breath and relaxing into your body, those types of techniques. Also, exercise would help uh, burn off the, uh, an overactive mind with these uh, aspects. And, um, you know, whatever it takes that is more, that is more geared towards loving yourself, so you can just let go and just be. That's what Uranus and Taurus is all about. But with the added energy here in this T-square between the moon and Uranus, this is about trust, Taurus, trust, your heart, Leo, 
and trust your intuition, which is Scorpio here and Pisces here. I, uh, you know, it, it's your your psychic abilities and intuition is. I don't really know that I could put it into just one sign, but the water signs tend to uh, help us understand a little bit more. Because when you feel and experience something and clear it out, that's the way. You can't do it with just your head or an intention. You have to go through it. You have to experience it. And that's what Scorpio is all about. Cancer can feel, Scorpio can experience, and Pisces can just let it go and move into a new reality. Compassionately let it go. So I feel like that's what the Leo moon is about. Let's see, anything else? Well, yeah, it's in a double trine here between Jupiter and Chiron. So again, it is, uh, it's, it's healing your belief systems. There's a nice easy flow of trusting your heart to heal the old conflicts of the past between these two points here with, with Chiron and Jupiter. And of course you can see all the Oppositions are the same. We still have that triple opposition here and the triple trine up to Pluto here. And yeah, the double trine there. Chiron is still in the sextile to Mars, creating that opportunity to think um, outside the box and to learn some new ways of healing the past, healing deepest inner conflicts with the... Um, with Chiron, because that's what Chiron's all about. And then Chiron also holds space for once you heal those deepest inner conflicts, they turn into your gifts, because that's all they were. The conflicts are just on top of the gift. Gifts, I should say. Let's see. All the other aspects are still the same. The, uh, the semi-square between Saturn and Jupiter, and then Jupiter down to Uranus. Still the same there, for as, as in earlier in the week. Um, Venus is still trying Uranus. Yeah, I think that's, I feel like that's pretty much it. I'll just go ahead and move on then, because all the other aspects are still the same. It's, kind of, it's, a, it's a ditto of... Tuesdays and earlier in the week as well, but then the heart comes in and says, oh, let's let's heal this. Now, the only way we can mess this up is if we get into my way or the highway energy and and we're going to hold on to the past and because we're trying to control the future. That's the only way we can mess that up. Oh, Venus is in an inconjunct. I almost missed this. Venus is in an inconjunct to Saturn, so there's an adjustment to, hmm, feels like letting go of um, <clears throat> judgments of uh, the way people have done things in the past. Now that you know thing, how, how things should work, you may hold some old judgments, or I mean, I would, some old judgments around, well, they did it wrong, now I've got to do it right, and I'm the one that has to clean up the mess. Why do I have to clean up all the messes all the time, right? Like that kind of thing. Um, you can just only only clean up your mess and tell them to clean up their own. <laughs> Unless you're dealing, you know, with kids, and well, even no matter how little they are, you can teach them games to, you know, how to put away their toys and stuff like that. Let's play cleanup and make a song and all that. Uh, but then sometimes we're, we're helping out handicapped people or we are in charge of the welfare of a handicapped person. That's a completely different story or situation, I should say. That's a completely different level of healing experience that um, puts you into a level of sainthood. Okay, so let's see. For today, the moon is still in for, for Thursday, the 22nd, and we're moving into the autumn equinox. It's going to happen later. Is that tonight, or is it Friday? Yes, yeah, tonight, 6.04 p.m. So 12 hours later, we're going to have the first day of fall. <laughs> okay, but so for this morning, the moon's in Leo at 20 degrees. It's still in this square. 
from the past to the future, just, just like I just spoke about. That hasn't changed. But it's more, uh, it has built up to like an apex peak point, and now it's waning, so it won't be so intense. Uh, but I think everything I just said actually applies to Thursday as well, except it's just not as intense. Chiron is still in that in conjunct to the south. South node there. Mars trying Saturn is still there. That's been all week, right? Yeah. Yeah, Mars trying Saturn. Yeah. That's been all week. 16 to 19. That's right, because Mars has to get to 19, and then it'll, it'll still be a waning trine. But anyway, so the nice flow between figuring out what works, learning new ways, to create something that actually works. Now, if this is, uh, you know, part of politics or in any organization, this could be where some new laws, rules are created that actually help humanity. And a lot of energy to, a lot of energy gone into ways to, to you know, figure all of that out. I love it. I... Uh, Let's see, Neptune, so again the triple trine up to Pluto, and the, so we have <laughs> a lot of power here with Pluto being up at the fulcrum point with this kind of like bucket, you know, situation, and it's an even tighter orb here, well it's still 8 degrees between the Sun and Venus, but um, Notice how the sun is really moving closely. Sun and Mercury are moving into a real tight conjunct, joined uh, aspect. Yeah, and opposing Neptune. So dissolving those old ways that don't work. When it comes to flooding, things like that, Neptune rules water, Neptune rules gas. Uh, this could be ways to heal, needing to be very careful in weather situations, storm situations. Uh, yeah. So a lot of, uh, still a lot of spiritual healing, and then with. Um, Spiritual healing through communication and through getting into the nitty-gritty details of what works and what doesn't. And with that information, also it could bring in protection around um, ways to uh, protect yourself further, even more so. You know, because Uranus in uh, Taurus is all about creating new inventions for safety. And, and it can be technology that uh, creates safety. So you know how it works, though. Um, first, the, the darkness is exposed. You know, like <laughs> Tuesday morning when I was listening to... Um, I, I, I was... Uh, it came up in my feed, in my YouTube feed, because I follow um, the Washington Post, and there was a whistleblower for tw a whistleblower on Twitter who had, a guy who'd worked with Twitter for years, worked. Um, tech, I, I can't remember his position, but anyway, he exposed how Twitter basically just has all of our information and. We can even deactivate our accounts and no one deletes it. It's they're they're geared. They're not set up to manage. They're set up to just take money for ads. And um, it was basically a big old chaotic mess. This is what I'm seeing here, like the cleanup. Uh, and it's but it's it's not just Twitter. It's also uh, of course you know Facebook, but it's also. Facebook might be a little bit better at it, only because they've been sued so many times. But, um, so there's a exposure of the details of what happened and how someone hasn't taken responsibility for it. 
and that needs to happen in the future. So we have the triple trine up there to Pluto. This is this is another way where you know astrology is showing us what's what's going on. Yeah. Because Pluto would be people in positions of authority. And um and you know how we <laughs> Whenever we sign up for anything, we don't read all that fine print. I mean, because you'd be there for two days, like trying to read the fine print of uh, acceptance terms, like terms of acceptance or whatever. It's like, no, you just, you're trying to figure out a password. You're trying to figure out all this other stuff. And um, so th this is more details about that. And we're also leading up to the January 6th, um, the last, I think it'll be the last one, uh, you know, committee's uh hearing so look at this the information about the dirty politicians and dirty attorneys dirty people that have been working uh have been abusing misusing their power because there's a flow of information that's going to tell us more and saturn squaring the nodes it's been sitting there bringing it all through you know, holding space for it, slowly but surely. And the moon in Leo is exactly opposing Saturn. So there will be some illumination as to what people have done in the past, how they've used their power, because Leo is also powerful. Well, all the signs are powerful. But Leo tends to show our creative self-expression. So what did these guys create? in the past. And notice how we have a grand trine going on here. Right? We had it before too. Because this this uh, square grand trine, why did I say that? No, it's a grand square. <laughs> Try a trine here. The blue lines are the trines and the sextiles. Uh, the moon is trining Chiron. So yeah, man, the conflicts of the past. I'm thinking politically right now. The conflicts of the past, even though I said I wasn't going to do much of that, but I'm going to do this. The conflicts of the past, opposing the government, Saturn's a government, uh, the emotional mood of everybody that wants justice, and that's the backdrop well, those are the oppositions, but then the squares, the tension field, we have Saturn, the man, the government position, again, in tension between the freedom of the future, rules for humanity, and, and freedom and uh, safety, and then the dirt from the past, the money scandals, the sex scandals, the money laundering, the human trafficking, and then the moon's over here, and we're saying, uh, oh, let's let's hear your story. Or, you know, are, are these people showing up for their subpoenas? Or is this uh, Liz Cheney, because she's a Leo. I don't know if she's a Leo moon. Her chart's around here somewhere, right close by, but I'm not going to go digging. <laughs> it takes too long. But uh, somebody's talking, somebody's expressing as to the, you know, do we want to stay stuck in the past and let somebody get away with something? Or do we want to move into the future in a safe, knowing that there's more safety and more rules and regulations that will actually be um, not only created, but you, but regulate or created, re relate, regulated and um, uh, what's the word when they enforce? The rules need to be created and enforced. And, you know, the House Ways and Means Committee has all of Trump's tax returns now. So there's that. He lost, he finally lost that one. And uh, there were 40, like I said before, 40 of the, um, 40 subpoenas that went out to all of his peeps. And Mr. My Pillow Dude got his cell phone taken away with all of his, he says he runs five businesses out of his cell phone, but whatever. <laughs> All of this is coming out. So, okay. Yeah, with the moon opposition Saturn, that's really strong. A strong confrontation. 
Now, for us personally, like I said, there can be a confrontation to, with yourself to stay in your heart in the face of somebody who seems to have control over you. So if this is a boss or a supervisor, love yourself through any situation. But if it's not working out, start looking for a new job because you'll find it. You have to want it and deserve it. Know that you deserve it first. And if you feel unqualified for the new job you want, then, you know, this is the time to use all that Virgo energy and start studying. Start doing tutorials, get some help. Uh, because anything you want to learn, somebody's probably already done it before. <laughs> I, I guarantee you. Even, even if you're creating something brand new for yourself, somebody's done it before. There's always someone to hold the, you know, held the candle, you know, forward ahead of time. And you can follow in their footsteps. Find yourself a mentor. And, uh, but you're going to do it in your own way. So even if you're doing something just like somebody else does, you're, you're still going to bring your own into it. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, wait, Venus... Venus is squaring Mars. Yeah, that, that was happening, though, wasn't it? I mean, I, I know it was last week. Yeah, I didn't talk about it this week, but I talked about it last week. It's the same thing. It's, it's, all, it, it's all the same thing I was saying. It has to do with tension fields in relationships. You know, are they, are they telling the truth? And, yeah, and it, do I believe them? Right? Getting clear on that. Okay. So now, here we are with the autumn equinox. So the first day of Libra, zero degrees Libra. It's conjunct Mercury. Mercury's moved back to zero degrees Libra at the same time. Uh, and pretty soon Mercury's going to, uh, I think tomorrow, I think, Mer yeah, because look, zero degrees, 29, doesn't have to go too far. So by tomorrow, I'm sure that Mercury will be in Virgo. Mercury retrograde will be in Virgo. So we've got tight, tight here. So lots of communication about relationships. And, and with Venus trying that flow into the future, breaking through old patterns. The moon is the emotional um, climate will be making some adjustments so that you bring more power into your life. All these aspects are the same. You know, in reflection now, in hindsight, now that I've gone through all these charts for the, you know, the days that for this week and last week too, I can, I can sense how we're building up. We've been building up. So I'm so glad to do these a week ahead of time because, you know, if I was just doing them on a daily basis, I wouldn't be able to see the track this pattern, you know. The pattern is that uh, we're, we're headed towards major breakthroughs. We're headed towards freeing ourselves up like never before, but all the information is coming through. And we're loving the new information that comes out because it's revealing what we've been sitting on for years and understanding why we had so much anxiety. And, um, and, and now we're clearing out. This is about clearing out the past. Look at that sun in that, um, well, actually, sun conjunct Mercury, semi-square, the south node of the past. Libra is all about justice and fairness and equality. Libra does not like it when things aren't fair. Libra is all about partnerships and making those decisions, Mercury decisions, Libra decisions, that bring in more justice, fairness, Equality. There can be some inner self-talk about why do I feel like I need to please somebody so much? What am I trying to get from them if I'm trying to keep them happy all the time? What is that really about? And you can take it back home to your parental upbringing. Take it back home to yourself inside. Work to do all that inner you know, that inner release work. Yeah, all the aspects are the same. So everything I've said before uh, is still in force. 
the sun is in a semi, or I'm sorry, set to the sun and Mercury, sun conjunct Mercury is in a sesca square to uh, Uranus. Or no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, to the north node. But Uranus is there so tight, I, I kind of feel the whole thing. Although sesca squares are orbs of just, you know, like zero to three degrees top, so I see why there's not that extra line there. Anywho. What's a sesco square, you may wonder? Well, I, I've said it a bunch of times. It's basically, uh, it can be a stubborn, a stubborn quality. It's two signs that don't really relate well because Taurus can want to be in control and have things be a certain way because it's safe that way. And Libra can be like, oh, let's try something new. Come on, let's try. There, there's a whole lot more. It's air. Earth and air don't, always work well. And if there are fights, you know, like imagine the wind blowing over a lot of land. Well, who's going to win? You, you know, usually usually the land wins and the, the earth, I'm sorry, the land, the earth wins and the, you know, because it stays solid and stable. But the trees blow and the branches can break and fires can start and it's it can you know if there's too much air just blowing like crazy it's not good but libra is all about balancing so this could make for some interesting weather and this could make for some interesting uh, and this would just be for the day uh, interesting conversations but Try not to be stubborn unless you know that you're holding on to, you know, like a moral place for you inside where you know something's right and and they're being cruel and mean or something and you don't, you know, you, you know that that's not the right way to go. You can, with Libra, air, you can walk away, leave the conversation, especially with conject Mercury. So let's see. Yeah, because there is an adjustment. The moon... In, in an adjustment to your your power and your integrity. And it could be something that's, you know, your heart's open and, and it's loving and kind and that's huge. That's a that's huge. But there's an adjustment that you, you might have to hold on to that loving space to stay in your integrity, which means just letting someone else go on with their conversation somewhere else. You might have to leave the room or leave the space, whatever, wherever it is. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So basically, just remember, it's 6:04 p.m. Pacific time, so it'd be 9:04 p.m. Eastern, and adjust, you know, according to your time zone, that we have that first day or when when the sun moves into um, zero degrees Libra. Okay. So, yeah, harvest time, clearing, cleaning out, moving out and get, getting the summer clothes in another closet or pushing them to the back and bring it or si other side or whatever and bringing out the winter clothes, right? <laughs> That's what I was doing this week. <laughs> okay, so Friday, Friday morning, the moon is now in Virgo. The triple trine that we have up to Pluto is still going on, but now we also have Venus trining um, over here to Uranus. Ooh, this is a lot of breakthrough energy, especially in relationship and healing. Breakthrough energy and relationship and healing that, that is very strong. And yeah. That's good. Now the moon in Virgo, so so Virgo energy, remember, it's all about details, healing, being useful, being of service, it has everything to do with our health and creating order out of sometimes what seems like chaos. Uh, Virgo doesn't like it when things are messed up and doesn't like it when things are chaotic and wants to be perfect and pure, but you have to be careful with beating yourself up and thinking that you need to be perfect because you don't. That's just not human, right? But one of the beautiful things about Virgo energy is that it, it's like doing your best. It's that quality of doing your best. But don't beat yourself up while you're trying to figure out what's best for you and what is the best way to go. And that is in 
uh, an inconjunct, so there's an adjustment up to expanding, up to uh, expansive Jupiter. So questioning your beliefs, do I really need to be perfect in order to be loved or feel loved or feel admired or you know basically with all these relationship aspects here i would say the question can be if you catch yourself thinking about what you're going to say to somebody and you're obsessing about it i uh, what is that all about like why why are you thinking you need to have perfect words as long as you're coming from a kind place and you can be in your heart with it you you can find your way through the words if you just start the conversation but sometimes with all this Virgo energy, and the moon is leading up, all right, and we are moving up to the, we're going to have that new moon, so when the moon conjuncts the sun, uh, that'll be on the 25th, uh, it'll be in an early degree uh, uh, Libra, and it'll be a whole new... Well, I think it can be a whole new intention for relating to yourself and others in a whole new way. But it's always about your relationship with yourself first. So if your mind is is going in the direction of kind of obsessing over the right words or the right way to do things, just ask yourself this simple question. This is what I do. What helps me? You can try it. Try it out and see if it helps you. Basically, I ask myself, uh, what, who, who, what, who, wh how, basically, who do I think I need to be in order to have love and or approval? And I've used that technique for years and years and years, and it has helped me get to the place where I feel like I can just be myself. Now, mind you, I'm not in any way, shape, or form perfect or not, none of that. But um, I'm not insecure anymore, <laughs> you know, because when you figure out where it came from, where the tapes came from, where the self script came from, and you figure out the false beliefs with it and you process through the pain, then you can flip the script and turn it all around. So if you catch yourself obsessing about what you would say, or what you didn't say, or what you should say, all of those things, um, then you know you're kind of spinning. And we don't want to spin. We don't want to be spinning in vicious circles of um, beating ourselves up or beating others up. Because it just doesn't, it won't get you anywhere. It'll keep you stuck, and I don't want you to feel stuck. But sometimes we have to go through periods of feeling stuck just to feel how awful it is. <laughs> I mean, I know that one. I've done that. Uh, let's see. The moon in conjunct Jupiter is going to be that adjustment to heal the past and be more present in the future. More present now. But the thing is, you know, it's like you're meditating and you're in the now and then you're like, oh, now it's now. No, now it's now. Oh, it's now again. Now, now. <laughs> it, it, it's nice to get into the state of being. <laughs> Yeah, but it's also nice to try and Virgo organize your new life. Uh, Uranus, Taurus, reinvent yourself. Reinvent your way of being as you move through life. <laughs> Releasing the past and forgiving and letting go. So, okay, so that's that's Friday there. Notice that moon, in the, at least in the morning, that moon in conjunct Jupiter is the only aspect we have to the moon. And everything else is the same. And then Saturday, the moon is conjunct Venus, and it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. So for this weekend, you can look forward to, of course, I'll be back before, you know, next Sundays. But uh, all the other aspects are the same. We do have a yod here, though. So let's talk about that. And just remember, everything I told you before is for all week and, and beyond. These other long terms are, are uh, beyond. Although, notice that that one line from the past, from the south node, from Saturn to the south node, keeps going in and out. And um, I don't know why my program is doing that. It, it should still be there. You know, I guess it's just not a tight enough square. Because 14, let's see, yeah, 14, 14, and 19, that's still 5 degrees, but whatever. 
but th they're really reinforcing this Saturn square Uranus. And that is, you know, that trying to break free with some new rules for humanity that lead us into more safety and security and more pleasure and happiness and fulfillment and prosperity, you know, all the Taurus things. Um, okay, so, because, right, all you have to do is just think simply. Like, if we're not safe, we can't build. If there's no security, if we don't have safety, if we don't have gun control that's safe for the kids in our schools, then we can't build. There's no future if our kids aren't safe. There's no future if grandparents are being thrown to the curb without social security, right? I mean, families would suffer. So that's what we're up against here. Hold on, I need to get some water real quick. Okay, that's better. I feel like a frog drying out here. So anyway, safety, security is what's on the table with this Saturn square Uranus. And the remember how we had the, the triple trine? Well, the moon is in that sextile to the south node joined, even though we've got the triple trine up to Pluto. But um, this double trine here to the moon is really important as well. So the same aspect before with the stellium in Virgo and uh, the sun's uh, is moving this way, but Mercury's moving this way. Venus goes more slowly. The moon's going to join up here. But what all this is saying is that we're moving towards from the, the week this weekend on, from Saturday morning on uh, into next week, we're moving towards more, more, much, much more of a powerful flow to our inner integrity and building a life from that inner integrity and connected to your spirit, of course. And with um, the moon and the double trine here to the north node in Uranus, in Virgo to Taurus can be, and Mercury, you know, rules uh, Virgo and Gemini, and the moon is square Mars in Gemini, right? So there's a lot of, and when there's a stellium, you know, of planets together in the same sign, it, it makes, it amps up all of, it's a blend of energy, but it amps up all the power of those planets in, in that sign. So there's a ton of Virgo energy in this square over to Mars, gathering information, details, information, just the facts, ma'am. And then how do we move forward now that we have all those facts? And I think I'll end on that. No, I can't. <laughs> I thought I could, but no, we need to look at this. The moon is in, because when we have a finger of fate here, here, I'll, I'll color it in. I, I was going to not, because this takes so much more time to do all this. But we have to, and I'm combining all of that because it's too tight of an orb, even though the program's not complying with my wishes. <laughs> then again, I could see why, because we'd have just way too many lines. Uh, but so this up to Pluto, up to powerful Pluto, this is really important here. Okay. And then over here to Neptune. Okay, let's talk about these real quick. In Mars, trying Saturn, that's been there all week and, and it's going to be for quite a little bit. Well, yeah, because Mars doesn't move that fast. Mars is going to be in Gemini, I think it's like till next March or so. I think, because it's going to go retrograde. So we are in the, this season of um, really getting all the facts down. <laughs> all kinds of leaked... Uh, phone messages, uh, you know, audio files, all types of leaked information we can plan on uh, finding or being or being discovered. So, anyway, back here to this yod. Remember, the yod is like a finger of fate, finger of God, whatever you want to call it. So we have the sextile brings in opportunity. The opportunity is to heal in Virgo, heal, discern, clear. 
the past in Scorpio, but we can't do that until we have all the facts. And that's what the moon square Mars is here. And then once we have that, those opportunities, once we've met those opportunities, then the flow, the adjustment can be made to healing. And the healing, of course, in Aries is all about something new, winning something, getting through something that we've been, we've courageously, especially combined with, um, with Jupiter up there holding space in Aries too, healing. And all of this is, you know, in opposition, right? The sun and, yeah, that's still in opposition there. So these breakthroughs that can continue to uh, come through, the, the occurrence of so many different breakthroughs that can help us win something that's been holding us back in the past. So I think this is moving towards um, great healing, deep healing in our personal lives. And also, I, politically, I, I think that um, September and October and in through the end of the year is going to be unbelievably powerful. And um, we can look forward to Rovember, I feel, and, and not just a blue wave, but a tsunami. But I want it to be gentle. I don't want anybody to be hurt. I, I just want to hold the space for justice, where the people, <laughs> it's the people, it's the power of the people, not just one individual or a group of individuals holding us hostage. No more of that. So with that, now I will definitely close this up and uh, wish you guys the best week ever and take good care. Hugs. <laughs> Bye.